Okay, what we're going to look at here is just a bit of a summary flow chart for the four different modes of inheritance that we had in four pages of notes. So with the summary, we don't like having these notes scattered on four different pages. What we want is we want to see everything just out in one summary flow chart. And again, what it's going to look at is all the different pieces of evidence to indicate what mode of inheritance a particular trait or disorder will exhibit uh, based, on a, uh, uh, based on a pedigree. Okay, and of course on pedigrees, you know if they're colored in, they are affected with that disorder or maybe that trait. So when we look at that, there's four, we know there's four modes. And we're going to just do a little bit of a flow chart here now. And we're going to talk about the different types of evidence for that particular mode. So recessive. Okay. And if it's recessive, we know uh, that by looking at the pedigree, because that particular trait or disorder will skip generations. Okay, and you remember in your pedigrees, generations are indicated by Roman numerals. So Roman numeral one, first generation, Roman numeral two, second generation. If it's skipping generations, it's gonna be recessive. And the other one is dominant. Okay, if it's dominant, that trait or disorder is going to generally be occurring in every generation. So somebody, not all individuals of course, but somebody is uh, affected or colored in with that trait or disorder in every single generation. That tells us it's a dominant. So those are the good pieces of evidence to ascertain whether it's recessive or dominant. But we also know that there's a branch because we have two types of recessive. We have autosomal recessive, and the other one we have is sex-linked recessive. Okay, so they're both recessive. Now, if it, and let's put those in little boxes. If it's autosomal, it's going to be relatively equal boys and girls that are affected, your pedigree, okay? So, and I say relatively equal because we don't always have equal boys and girls. Sometimes it'd be a little bit more, a little bit less, but it's relatively equal. When it's sex-linked recessive, it's going to be overwhelmingly, and I mean it is obvious, overwhelmingly males that are affected. Okay, so those are good pieces of evidence. Now, if we want another piece of evidence here, these are the main ones. Autosomal, if they're heterozygous, and they're heterozygous that are not affected, that also tells us that this is going to uh, uh, be recessive as well. Okay, but that's not a main one. Let's stick to the main ones just for this flow chart. So now let's take a look at our dominant. We have two types of dominant here, right? We can either be autosomal dominant. I'm just gonna put auto, uh, and then I'm gonna put this one as sex-linked dominant. Now, if it's autosomal, again, if it's dominant every generation, so keep following that flow chart, but same thing, it's gonna be relatively equal boys and girls that are affected. If it's sex link dominant, it's going to be overwhelmingly females that are affected. Now, this is by far the most difficult one to determine because it can get you can get mixed up with other ones. But I'm going to give you one more piece of evidence that is going to determine without a shadow of a doubt that it's going to be sex link dominant, and that's this affected males, so either with a disorder or trait that are colored in in your pedigree, must always, now not sometimes or occasionally, must always have affected mums. Well, they only have one mum, so we'll say affected mum, and affected daughters, all of them have to be affected daughters, okay? 
So this again is a flow chart to summarize four pages of notes. There are other things, other clues, but these are the main ones. And if you follow this, rewrite this uh, a couple of times, you're gonna have a, a better opportunity to come up with the right mode of inheritance for a particular trait or disorder. Okay, uh, any issues, just give me an email. Thanks guys.